Susan just left the meeting. She is frustrated, she is angry, she's hurt. She thinks that the men in that meeting did not care one hoot what she was talking about. They didn't listen to her and they cut her off. Last week she told her manager, Mark, that if she didn't get more respect in the office, that she was quitting this job. And Mark, on the other hand, was, had just met with Susan. He wants her to succeed. He spent a ton of time and energy recruiting her, bringing her into the company, because he thinks she's brilliant. He thinks she's an asset to the team, but he doesn't know how to fix it. Have you ever had an experience at work where you haven't been able to get your point across, where you haven't felt heard, or you've been in a meeting where it goes on and on in all different directions and nobody seems to get to the point? I meet with people all the time, and this is the kind of example that shows up everywhere. My name is Kimmy Avery, and I'm a relationship navigation specialist. I work with men and women who are challenged relating with themselves and the group in order to have a relationship that works. They don't have the toolkit because we've, fa we've fallen into this mistaken assumption that men and women are exactly the same as well as equal. Equal's a great thing. Thinking that we're the same is a big challenge. I bring my skills as an NLP master practitioner and trainer, a certified relationship coach, and I have a master's in counseling. I bring all of those things together to help my clients individually and professionally get the help that they need in order to have amazing relationships. So I want to talk to you about super genius teams today. Teams, we have all kinds of teams, whether you're an entrepreneur or you work at a company, you have teams of people in order to be successful, you have to have a team. And teams can be great or they can be kind of mediocre. Genius, one person can be a genius and that's a fabulous thing. But the structure of genius is when you have many people working together, more than one at least, who are working together, collaborating, and bringing their own unique skill set to the group. And the structure of that, when you take it to the next level, to super, you take the superness in to helping accentuate the uniqueness and each person's attributes. So that's where you get super genius teams. Usually, we have problems accepting another point of view or we have problems with unspoken expectations or assumptions about other people. I call this stuck in your own head syndrome. We all suffer from it and it creates big problems. I call it CEOs for short, stuck in your own head syndrome. And that keeps us from seeing another person, listening to their point of view and actually hearing their ideas as unique and different. As a foundation, we look at the masculine and feminine, or the individualistic perspective, which is the masculine style of being. That's single-focused, direct, clear, linear in thinking, and systematic. On the other hand, you've got the relational experience, which is the feminine style, which is all about collaboration, interdependency, multitasking, multi-focus that are unrelated, and women tend to look at men as misbehaving versions of themselves because they're stuck in CEOs. They're looking at the other person as a version of themselves, so they're not hearing their perspective. They're not hearing their ideas. They're not hearing their uniqueness. On the other hand, the masculine looks at the feminine version and says, why don't you get to the point? Why are you not single focused? Why do you interrupt me all the time when you've got new ideas, when I'm focused on something else? You can see that these two perspectives, neither one of them is right or wrong. And actually, they collaborate together when they're appreciating their uniqueness. So the group that I told you about before with Susan and Mark, Susan when Mark learned about the feminine way of being, he understood why she was emotional 
and what she needed in order to fit in. Mark taught the rest of his team how to ask for a woman to get to the point in a way that has her feel like she's respected and valued. Susan began to feel more comfortable. She felt like part of the team and all, everybody won in that situation. I'm curious what you, your life would be like if you had a better sense of team in your experience, in your workplace or at home or in your entrepreneur life. What steps are you going to take today to appreciate the differences and develop super genius teams in your life?